is in Knoxville on the Play for K Sunday afternoon in a Tennessee tussle as the Tennessee Lady Vols host the Commodores for the second time this year. Hi again, everybody, and welcome here to Rocky Top with former Lady Vol Cameron Harris. I'm Michael Watrang. Come in and stay a while with us here today. These two teams met earlier this year. Tennessee won by 13. What are you looking for out of today's matchup? Coming into this game, Tennessee may feel like they have the advantage, but I wouldn't count Vandy out just yet. They're a tough, gritty team. Tonight is going to be about who can consistently get those high-quality shots and execute for 40 minutes. Two of the best scorers in the league went at it on the January 8th meeting. Kaija Harbison was everywhere for Vanderbilt. 27 points in the matchup, but Rakia Jackson was matching her punch for punch. Vanderbilt is a much better team than they were when they faced Tennessee the first time. They're coming off of a huge win against Arkansas. Kaja Harbison, she is such a force. She had 27 points in that first matchup. And then for Tennessee, you have Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson continuing to be so consistent for them. Vandy cut it to an eight-point game with three minutes to play. Late bucket for Rakia Jackson pushed it back to double figures. In that first matchup, rebounding such a key stat, plus 21 for Tennessee in second chance points. Vanderbilt's going to have to box out Tennessee, establish that presence early on in this game. They can't let Tennessee get those second chance opportunities today. Kaija Harbison has been one of the best scorers in the entire country this season. She's averaging 19.7 overall this year, 20 points per game thanks to a 41-point effort at the end of January. She is the do-it-all player for this Vandy group. She's so fun to watch. She came to Vandy to see how she matches up against the best of the best, and she's doing such a great job of that so far this season. Just about ready for tip-off in the 88th all-time meeting. Tennessee leads it. 77 to 10 all time and this place is rocking and here we go from Knoxville it is Tennessee basketball off the opening tap see how the Lady Vols respond after that double overtime loss on Monday against Mississippi State on the road you can already see Vanderbilt playing that pack in defense that's what they like to do Rakia Jackson doing a great job early on attacking that defense. So Jackson gets the first bucket of the game. She had 23 in that first matchup. Around a screen, Gerard, one of the top three-point shooters in the nation, misses a two-pointer here. Horston, full throttle, spin move. This is the opening attempt. Jackson nearly tracked down the offensive board, but that was one of the things that Kelly Harper talked to us about earlier today. In that Mississippi State game, I got good looks, just missed some of the easy finishes. And you have to convert when you're in situations like they were in Mississippi State game. It's those little baskets, those little bunnies that add up at the end. So right now, it's, they're going to have to capitalize on those opportunities. Vanderbilt shorthanded, just eight players dressing. Sasha Washington underneath misses the attempt. Caroline Strickland, good defense. Over a minute in, Tennessee lone points. Tess Darby, catch, shoot, quick release. Short this time around. She had that really hot stretch in the middle of the season. However, she has struggled here in the last six, just 34 points in that stretch. She's such a critical piece with her ability to stroke it from deep. Tennessee, they were actually looking for her. They wanted her to get her to the ball so she could shoot it. I think as of late, they've been kind of getting away from that. So Coach Harper, they really want to get back into finding her on the offensive end. Here's Harbison, the second leading scorer in the league, drawing a personal foul. Well, she transferred from St. Louis, the number two leading scorer in Billiken history, ninth among active NCAA players, over 2,100 for her career. She can fill it up with anybody in this league. Her game is just so fun to watch, like we talked about early on. She's just so good. She's, she's a special player, and when we talked to Coach Ralph earlier, she's just so special in her game and what she's able to do. Horston did a good job defending without fouling. Striplin wants a three-pointer. Short iron this time. Harvest in the board. Good job by Vandy on a couple occasions. One and done for Tennessee. Harbison pulls the trigger and gets a friendly roll. She's tough to stop in transition once she gets that momentum rolling. She is. Tennessee's just going to have to locate her early on again. She's one of those players that Vandy really relies on to put the ball in the basket for them. Tennessee going to have to stop her and pick her up quickly. Vanderbilt's three starting guards played all 40 minutes on Thursday in the win over the Razorbacks. 
Jackson wide left. Foul whistled underneath. It comes on Vanderbilt. This is what Harbison does in transition. Nobody picks her up. And just able to get the easy jumper. You can't give a player like her too much space. She's going to knock it down consistently every time. Walker fires the inbound of Jordan Horston. She gets a free throw line, jump shot, and connects. Beautiful shot from Jordan Horston. Bella Lachance pushed into this role with injuries to Jordan Cambridge and Ayanna Moore. Cambridge, one of the best defenders, and Moore an all-freshman team pick last year. But another turnover. Horston sprinting. Left block. This time she converts. Great job by Jordan Horston. You can see right there, Vandy, there was a little bit of miscommunication. You had two players back, but they were trying to figure out who to pick up. Situations like that, you just got to find, find and stop the ball. Gerard. Two-point shot. Kick connects. Gerard leads the SEC in his 13th in the country in three-pointers made, 69 this season. She gets a glimmer of space. She's going to connect. Walker the other way. She puts in the layup. Gerard, she thrives in big moments. That's what she likes to do. She likes to kind of be the center of attention in, in those bigger games. Here she is with it, the grad student. She transferred from Boston College. Allen, straight away three pure for 34% shooter this season. And Allen, the rookie from Pennsylvania, drills it. If you're Coach Ralph, you got to be really happy with how your team is playing right now. She, When she talked to me earlier, she was just saying how she really wants them to focus on being possession by possession. She doesn't want them to look too far ahead. She said that really allows them to kind of concentrate on what's in front of them. Forcing a turnover here and a chance for the first lead of the day. Harbison. Allen just hit one from outside. She hits again. Allen, she's feeling it. Tennessee's going to have to know that right now she's the go-to player on that arc, and they're just going to have to locate her. She averages seven a game this year. She's got six in the last two possessions. First lead of the day for Vandy. Jackson misses the jumper. Even though Jackson didn't knock that one down, I like that she was attacking the middle. That's where you want to break down these, that type of defense that Vanderbilt's playing. Six in a row for the Commodores. They've made four in a row. Allen feeling it from outside. This one rattles out. Just a little heat check, that's <laughs> all. Orston trying to put an end to a little drought for Tennessee. Jackson wide open underneath. Wow. Puts it in the layup. You have to give Stripling credit for that assist. She was able to hold her defender off, which gave Jackson an open layup. Tied at 10. Good start to this one midway through the opening period. Jackson gets a piece. Loose ball. She gets there. Takes it herself for the layup. She started with a defense and finishes. She saw Walker wide open, but she said, you know what, it's a little too late for that pass. Was able to take it all the way to the basket. Tough move by Jackson. Jackson with 28 and 11 on Monday at Mississippi State. Washington a deep jump shot, and that's smooth from the sophomore. You can see when Harbison drives into the paint, she really attracts that Tennessee defense. She really does a good job of making them pick her up, and she's able to just hit her open teammate for an open look. Lachance gets called for a foul, and this is great offense early. Both teams shooting above 55% in the opening period. Jackson turns defense into offense. We're tied at 12, six minutes into the game here in Knoxville. It's a really good start to this contest. 12 points apiece so far. Vanderbilt led by Shea Ralph, her second season at the helm. Seven years as an assistant at UConn, her alma mater, seven-time national champion between her player and coaching days. She was a player when Kelly Harper was a player, and boy, did those two have some great clashes. Connecticut versus Tennessee, and Coach Ralph said there was a mutual level of respect and kind of a love-hate relationship because they always knew that it would be a hard-fought game whenever they meet up. <laughs> Just that, Michael. She was saying how, you know, when you face competitors, you have to respect 
it because you know they're going to play hard for 40 minutes, but you know they're going to play hard for 40 minutes. So that's the part that comes in is just like, uh, you don't want to have to go through that. But it's again, it just goes back to that mutual respect between UConn and Tennessee. Kelly Harper is in her fourth season at the University of Tennessee. She's been tough to beat here in Knoxville in her tenure as SEC teams are just four wins in 26 tries here in this facility since Kelly Harper took over four seasons ago. Overall, Tennessee 12-3 here at home this season. And the Lady Vols trending towards yet another 20-win season would be the 46th in program history. I can't believe it's been four years already. That makes me feel so old. <laughs> but it's Kelly Harper, she's doing such a great job. And, you know, the team is really starting to buy into her program. And they're, I'm glad that they're finding so much success in that. Already won 80 games for the Lady Vols. And Jordan Walker at the line. And she puts Tennessee back on top. What have you seen out of these two groups for the first six minutes? I'm really excited to see how Vandy came out early on and just kind of established, you know, their presence and how they want to play this game. They're being aggressive, attacking the basket, and they're they're hitting down threes, and that's just such a good sign for Vanderbilt. Arbison travels. And a turnover for Vanderbilt. She's Camera Harris, former Tennessee post player. I'm Michael Watchring, our entire crew. Happy that you're spending some of your Sunday with us. Good matchup here as Tennessee has won five straight in the series. Jasmine Powell in the game for the first time. She's three away from 1,000 for her career. Jillian Hollingshed, she's been much better of late, draws a personal foul. I like that post up by Jillian Hollingshed. She's been playing so well lately. But I would love to see her just catch the ball and do a simple drop step to the basket. She had that defender on her back. She didn't really have to do too much. But luckily she was able to, you know, draw the foul. Holling shed 11 points, 8 rebounds in her last four. Powell chucks it out to Sarah Puckett. Three new players on the floor for Kelly Harper. Ten on the shot clock. Post entry, Hollingshed again. This time goes to work quicker. Draws two defenders, misses the opening attempt, taps it back in. Stick to itiveness from the Georgia transfer. Great job by her to just continue to finish what she started. Nobody boxed her out. That's what Vandy's going to have to do. They know that they're undersized. But when we even talked to Coach Ralph about that, she said we might not have size, depth, and, but she doesn't want the team to focus on that. She said what they have is all that they need to be successful. Hollingshed misses the foul shot, but she gets her own miss. Walker cuts. Excellent pass underneath. Jackson finishes. Nearly a steal, and it goes out of bounds. Tennessee has turned it up to a different level. They've scored six straight. That one started by Julian Hollingshed. Just getting that, that energy going, going off of her missed shot. Able to hit Jordan Walker, able to hit Rakia Jackson. That was a great sequence from Tennessee. So go back and forth here at the outset of this one. With scoring runs. Jackson wants a trifecta. Good box out by Bella Lachance, and she draws the personal foul. Vanderbilt's made five of its last six shots, but four turnovers in that stretch have kept them from adding to their point tally as Tennessee has scored the last six in less than a minute. Arbison can put an end to that in a hurry. She goes right at Hollingshed and draws the foul. Think about that. Harbison at 5'6", Hollingshed at 6'5", and she had no fear. <laughs> She's so tough. It's just, I'm laughing because it's just so fun to watch her play. It's just, she's just, she's just so skilled and just a tough player. Harbison at 
on the year. You take a look at the SEC ranks. Number one in minutes, two in points, and steals five in assists. And Coach Ralph called her fierce with God-given ability. Yeah, she's which complements her desire to be great. She's so resilient. And she, Coach Ralph said, it normally takes kids a long time to learn because of our generation with instant gratification. But out, even outside of playing Kaja, she's, she's so, so much humility. She's a quiet person. And she's just great. She's great. She has so much self-awareness. And she knows how to be, be good, what she's good at, what she needs to work on. Just a good overall kid. Hollingshed called for a travel, second turnover for Tennessee. Eddie Ball's got the full court press out. Harbison underneath Washington had issues controlling Jackson Swats. Wins sprints front court. Pocket all the way to the left block. Misses the shot, a chance the board. Big moment in this game early. Gerard all the way to the cup. Jackson again. Second block. Powell, Puckett in transition. Too strong here. Jackson's defense already. She's got that steal and bucket. Two blocks on two straight possessions. Rakia Jackson doing a good job. She knows that she has that size advantage over Bandy. They're able to just disrupt that shot. It's going to be tough for Bandy to score, but I like that they're still attacking Amanda versus. Jackson has seven blocks all season entering today. She's got two on back-to-back -back possessions. Tennessee leads it by four. Two minutes to go in the opening period. Sherrod, free throw line, jump shot, rattles it down. Averages 14 a game this year. More efficient from beyond the arc than she is inside of the arc this season, but pulls it within two. Hollingshed loses the basketball. Third turnover for Tennessee. And an opportunity to tie or take the lead for the Commodores. Demi Washington, her first action, misses the shot. Hollingshed affected it, and they call a foul on Jillian Hollingshed. You can see that Vanderbilt is playing a lot of ball screens. They want to get that screen so they can get some open jump shots, open threes. Again, they know they don't have that size advantage in the paint, but so they're trying to take advantage of that screen action. They just got to continue to knock down those open shots to stay in the game. It's the second personal foul on Hollingshed, so she comes out of the game. And Demi Washington, a 70% foul shooter, converts on the first and has a chance to tie this game for the fourth time. And does so. 18 apiece. Six unanswered for Vanderbilt. I'm really impressed by the response of Vanderbilt. Even if they get down a few points, they, they let it roll off of them. And that's what Coach Roth wants them to do is play it possession by possession. You can't hold on to the last play. You just got to keep moving forward. Tennessee's going to get foul shots here on the fifth team foul on Vanderbilt. Jasmine Franklin goes to the free throw line. She's been at 72% this year. Revolving door for Tennessee post players. This is the first foul shot. Tennessee two of four at the line. They haven't scored in the last two minutes and 22 seconds. Trying to go back on top. Franklin misses a pair. Vanderbilt an opportunity to take the lead, having scored six in a row. And they're going to the free throw line. Gerard picks up a foul. And an 81% foul shooter will get a chance to increase this 6-0 burst. And that just started with Gerard attacking. You know, she wasn't settling. She pushed the ball in transition, which made Powell pick up a cheap foul. But you got to give credit to Gerard for having that mindset of just pushing it in transition. That's an advantage for Vanderbilt. Gerard misses the first. Normally extremely reliable at the free throw line. But Vanderbilt is back on top. Seven in a row for the Commodores. 
It's 19-18 at the one-minute mark. Jackson and a foul whistle. Hold on. Is there a foul whistle or is it an inadvertent whistle? It is a foul and it's on Sasha Washington. And Jay Ralph unhappy with the call. Washington picked up three fouls in the first quarter against Arkansas on Thursday. Coach Ralph continued to play her the rest of the game. Bought her a couple minutes here and there when they could but had a lot of trust in a sophomore. And, and that was what, what Coach Ralph wanted to do was ultimately build trust. They discussed playing without fouling while still being aggressive defensively. They knew they would have to adjust and shift defensive, but Sasha Was Washington even told Coach Ralph to leave her in the game. Coach said that she understands how much they need her on the floor. Franklin missed three free throws in a row before connecting on that. We're tied for the fifth time. Under a minute to play in the opening period, and this has been a good one. Tennessee has dominated this all-time series. In fact, 15-0 under Kelly Harper against in-state foes. And more free throws coming up. This time it's Sasha Washington going to the charity stripe. 62% on the year. Mention the size disparity. Well, Washington at 6'2. Other than Chambers, nobody else is above six feet for Vanderbilt on the roster. Washington makes a pair and it's back to a two-point game. Tennessee hasn't made a field goal in three minutes. And with a 2.6 second differential shot to game clock. See how the Lady Vols respond here down the stretch. Good start scoring wise for the Commodores. Jackson working against Washington. Fall away, one foot shot. Rakia Jackson showing off all of her skills now. Great move by Rakia Jackson. The little step back one to action. Five seconds to go, Harbison. One second left, the chance at the buzzer. Just whisked it wide right. And it was an entertaining opening 10 minutes. We've been tied six times already. Shot blocks for Tennessee, but both sides tied at 21. Rakia Jackson has taken over this game very early in the contest, already in double figures, five out of eight from the field. And it's not just her offense that's getting the job done. She's picking up exactly where she left off. This whole season, she's just been so consistent and a reliable player for Tennessee. Her game is just so versatile. She can attack the basket. She can defend any position. She's a pro. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. She's a pro. Two blocks and a steal already. You take a look at her ranks in the SEC this season. Efficient and high volume scoring for Jackson. Outside of playing a lot of minutes on that double overtime game, really out of necessity against Mississippi State on Monday, she'd been in that 25 to 30 minute mark and she has certainly had a great deal of quality to her campaign. It's a big reason why she's projected as a top five pick in the WNBA draft. Horston is a top 10 selection projected here at the outset of some of the mock drafts coming up. See how Vanderbilt comes out in the second quarter. This is when Tennessee was able to get a little separation in the first meeting. But Chance misses a driving layup. Darby. Double dribble called on Tess Darby. Tennessee has turned it over four times. No Kelly Harper over there. As much as she might be annoyed about the turnovers, she wants the defense to turn it up to another notch, and they go, it looks like, to a matchup zone here. What do you think about this change coming out of the break? I think it's good for Tennessee to switch it up and kind of see because Vandy, they were doing a good job off of those ball screens. Right here, Washington being able to knock down the three. 
even though they're packing that defense in, they're going to have to still find, you know, those open looks on the outside and defend those well. Washington was two for nine entering the game from deep. High low underneath, and it's Demi Washington with a steal. Gerard all the way to the cylinder. Can't get the layup, and a foul is whistled, and this one's on Sasha Washington, and she's picked up her second personal foul. I like that Vanderbilt has continued to kind of just, again, pick up where they left off from the first quarter in attacking the basket, but they have to convert on those easy layups. Triplin at the high post. Jackson has it poked through her hands by Chambers. Harbison, Gerard, an open look. Perfect from outside. Second most accurate three-point shooter in the league. And the largest lead of the day for Vandy. Kaja Harbison, she just attracts any defense that she plays against. Turnover from Tennessee. When you have a player like that in Harbison who can really just penetrate to the basket and make that defense collapse on her, it really gives her teammates open looks. Bandy with back-to-back -back threes, another 6-0 run. They've had a 6-0, a 7-0, and a 6-0 run in this game, and they lead by six. Chambers. Gerard. Step back. It is a three. Jordan Walker collects the glass. Tennessee looking to snap this mini drought. I mean, not scored in the first two minutes of the quarter. Horston takes care of business all by herself with a teardrop. That was a tough basket from Jordan Horston. Harbison hangs, puts it up. Thought she got fouled. Horston is there to grab the glass. She's starting to take over on both ends. Jackson draws the foul. Jackson was just able to sneak behind Washington, able to get a mini jump. It's a great find by Jordan Horston to see her down low. A chance has picked up her second. Now three different Vanderbilt players who picked up two personal fouls. If you're Tennessee, you want to attack Vanderbilt. They only have eight players that they can rotate. You want to get them in foul trouble as much as possible. Jackson makes a pair. She's got a game high 12. She'll get a breather here. Tennessee with four quick ones, back within two. Great to have you with us today with Cameron Harris. I'm Michael Watring and our entire crew watching this one with you. It's been a good one at the outset. Six ties, three lead changes. Jada Brown into the game for the first time, the freshman from Arkansas. Harbison uses the screen, misses the jumper though. Foul whistled underneath. Demi Washington is called for the personal. Just her first. And now Lachance will come out and Gerard will come in. Well, Tennessee shooting 50%. This is the 16th worst field goal percentage defense in the country in Vanderbilt. SEC teams are shooting 52% from the floor on the season. This is what you would expect from Tennessee's offense, but Vanderbilt hanging around. They've made seven foul shots and four three-pointers. Vanderbilt is known for kind of shifting their defense around. They know that they're undersized. Tennessee is going to have that interior to their advantage today. 
has Darby able to knock down the three. That's a good sign. You also want them to be able to knock down that three because you know Vanderbilt wants to play that pack defense. But again, great job by Vanderbilt so far. Doing a good job defensively. Seven unanswered for Tennessee. Been a game of runs between these sides. Many scoring droughts and quick surges. Harbison. Vanderbilt taking advantage. They love that that high ball screen action. They don't have that size on the inside, so that was not what they want to do is drive the ball and score over Tennessee. They want to shoot over them. Good look underneath, and Stripling puts it in. High volume shot making for both sides. Jada Brown. She pulls the trigger from three, misses it. I see a chance to expand a one-point lead. Puck it. Perfect. Timeout Vanderbilt as Tennessee has wrapped off a 12-2 scoring run. And the Lady Falls are ahead by a four-point margin. Puck it, patient from deep. She converts, and Tennessee leads by four. Can the Lady Balls keep it rolling? The fight to find the cure. Vanderbilt is feeling it from outside here early in this contest. They came in fifth in the league, 34% from deep, but they made four out of eight early in this contest. Vanderbilt knows that they don't have the size advantage against Tennessee. They're able to penetrate to the basket, have those open looks on the outside. They're setting great ball screens, which leads their players to be able to knock down and have open looks. Tennessee's just going to have to fight over their screens and really, you know, extend their defense. Tennessee has scored 12 of the last 14 points, however, and leads by four in a game in which each side has led by as many as six at one point in this game. Great to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon in SEC play. Getting to that time of the year where you start to look a little bit at the standings, Tennessee sitting in third. Vanderbilt is at the bottom of the pack, but they're only a couple games away from the middle of the pack right now. Certainly at the end of the year, trying to take advantage, and this would be a nice victory. They haven't won back-to-back -back SEC games since January of last year, beating Kentucky and Auburn. When you look at Vanderbilt's record, you, you it doesn't reflect the effort that they play with. They're, they're tough. They're gritty. They play hard for 40 minutes. So you have to respect them, and anybody for that matter in this SEC, because any day, any team can show up and play a great game. Gerard left open, don't want to leave her. And a foul is whistled on Tennessee underneath as Washington is going for the rebound. And that's certainly a sigh of relief for Vanderbilt because that was nearly the third on their post player. That's a huge disadvantage for Vanderbilt is the fact that they only have eight deep on their bench. They have to play smart basketball because no one can afford to get into foul trouble. Another foul is whistled on Tennessee. Jordan Horston frustrated with that call because she knew that was just, you know, a cheap, unnecessary foul for her. Now she has to check out of the game. It's her second personal foul. So she gets a spot on the bench. Harbison, six points. Team's leading scorer turns over. Fifth giveaway for Vanderbilt. Tennessee leads by four. They've scored 12 of the last 14 points. Defense has turned it up. Lady Vols haven't missed in the second quarter so far. Darby, that's a deep trigger. Halfway down and out. Gerard misses the left-hand layup. Good hustle underneath by Allen, but it's a jump ball. Tennessee gets possession. She was the only one in pink amongst four white jerseys. Couldn't rescue the possession, however. Vanderbilt has gone cold. They've missed six of the last seven. Now under 40% shooting in the game. 
Tennessee by four. Bow, she's left open, pulls the trigger, misses it. That was a good look for Jasmine Powell. Now a foul is called on Tennessee. It seems like there's some type of miscommunication about the rotation for Vanderbilt right now. On that screen, Powell was just had an open look. Vanderbilt's going to have to rotate in those situations because Tennessee can't have open looks like that if they want to win this game. Tennessee back into that matchup zone. They sprinkled it in here in the second. Lachance penetrates, stumbles, and a foul is whistled, and the fans do not like that call. Good job like, by Lachance to attack the middle of that zone. The baseline in the middle of those zone defenses is, is like the golden spot. You have no one there to, to rotate and pick up. Your help it doesn't come from the middle. So good job by Lachance to attack and was able to almost get an open look before the foul. Looks like he steps on the shoe of Powell. And that's where the foul's called. A chance 83% at the line. This is the second best free throw shooting in the SEC. With three guards all over 80%. Bandy is 9 out of 10 at the stripe, and they're back within a deuce. Pretty effort here from Vanderbilt. Just eight healthy players on the roster. Stripling jump shot. Great patience by Stripling to just turn around to see what she has. She didn't knock it down, but I, I like the patience from the sophomore. Tennessee forces turnovers. Robinson couldn't handle the pass. Stripling miles into the game for the first time. Stripling again. Going right at Washington. Good patience again. And the left hand shot goes down. Great job by Stripling. Taking advantage. She's posting up hard. She's demanding the ball. She knows that Washington can't afford to get in foul trouble. So I like that Tennessee is looking to get the ball inside. It's Harbison at the high post. Dropping it off for Washington. Layup and one. That's a different way to go about a zone. Instead of having one of your post players flash the high post, have your leading scorer go there and she can be a playmaker. Exactly that. I think we're used to seeing that high-low action between the post players. But Harbison, she's so good at all around in her game. She was able to find her teammate just step behind below. Get an easy layup. Washington misses the foul shot. She has four. And we're tied. Or it's a two-point game, rather, at 35-33. Striplin will show the mid-range game here. Offensive rebound, Darby, and she puts it back down. Darby! Eight second chance points for Tennessee. That is what hurt Vanderbilt in the first meeting. That's the key for tonight. Boxed out early, not allowed Tennessee to get those opportunities. Gerard draws a foul. More free throws coming up for Vanderbilt. When these teams first met up, this was a very similar tale. Vanderbilt was within two. Later on, within four in that second quarter, Tennessee eventually had a little bit of a surge, went up nine at halftime, built it out to 18 in the third. Vanderbilt closed the gap to eight in the fourth, but Tennessee eventually won it by 13 points. This is a much improved Vanderbilt team, as you would expect for a group that is still growing with the transfers that they've had, with the youth that they've had to put in here without the usage of Cambridge and more out for the season with leg injuries. Coach Ralph really talked about the resilience of this team. They're responding so well right now. They're not letting Tennessee get ahead by too much. They're just taking it possession by possession. That's the type of game that they want to play. But when that second half comes, that's going to be the real response in, in those moments. Is They can't let Tennessee get too far out. They just, again, have 
have to play it minute by minute in order to be competitive in this game. And Arbison's aggressive, going to the basket. I think a little bit too what we're seeing is Vanderbilt's playing a little bit with house money. They understand where they're at. They're picked last in the preseason poll. They're down there at the bottom, second to last in the standings entering today. Tennessee, conversely, they're a late quarter close away from potentially beating LSU a couple weeks ago. They're a double overtime game away from beating Mississippi State last week and being within a game of first place. Instead, you're sitting at third. Pressure is there here late in the season. It's almost like Vandy doesn't have a reason not to play hard. And that's what Vanderbilt's always been known for. I just remember playing them. It's always been a tough game. They not have, they never really been on the top of the SEC standings. But every day that they play, they play hard. And, you know, playing that in-state rival is always going to be a competitive matchup because, you know, you have the support of Vandy coming out. You know, they're getting cheers here as well. If you're Tennessee, you know, you kind of have a chip on your shoulder because you're not number one or number two. And you have the potential and the pieces that you need to be number one or number two. And, and you know, with the SEC tournament coming up soon, right now it's, it's, it's crunch time in a sense of you, you don't want to make the same mistakes that you've been made, making earlier in the season. Demi Washington just picked up her third. Stripling misses a pair of foul shots. And Vanderbilt an opportunity to regain the lead down by one with two minutes to go in the second. Right now, Harbison is just wide open. Nobody's guarding her. They have to find her. There she is. Missed it short. Passat came out to close that length affecting the shot. Stripling. Puck it. They leave her open for three. A lot of one and done. She's six offensive rebounds for Tennessee. Vanderbilt's done a much better job on the glass in this game than the first time around. Tight contest in the waning moments of the first half. Gerard, a step back. Short here has been quiet of late. Spin cycle, splitting defenders and drawing the foul. Jackson doing a good job in transition. Was able to split between two defenders. Tough. Jackson, 78% foul shooter this season. Let's Tennessee back on top by two. And that's where it stands as Chambers snatches the rebound out of there. Vanderbilt with a minute to go in the first half. Harbison pulls up from the left elbow. Connects. She's into double figures. Gerard with 10. Harbison now with 10. And Harbison picks it up. A run out here for Vandy. Harbison missed the left. Good defense by Puckett. Vanderbilt should get another possession with about a six-second differential. Shot to game clock here in this opening half. Tied at 38. Seventh time we've been all level. Ten on the shot clock. Passat, a step back, three, air ball. And with 10 seconds to go in the half, it goes back to Vandy. You want to attack if you're Vanderbilt. It's a tie ball game. You want that advantage and that momentum to lead you in the second half. Harbison racing all the way to the front court, and she turns it over. Vanderbilt clamoring for a foul. No whistle, and with 3.4 seconds to go, Miles grabs the inbound. One second, half court shot up, wide left, and that is how the half comes to an end. 38 apiece. We were tied after a quarter. We're tied after two quarters. Great matchup here at an in-state rivalry. Tennessee and Vandy tied at 30.
Seven ties, six lead changes, and after 20 minutes in the 88th minute between Tennessee and Vandy, we're tied at 38 at the break. We welcome you back courtside with Cameron Michael. Great to have you with us for this contest here today. Why is this game tied at halftime? It's all about adjustments. Tennessee and both Vanderbilt are doing a good job of adjusting offensively and defensively. We got a good one, Michael, and I'm excited to see how Vanderbilt comes out this second half and continues their play. It has lived up to the billing because the two leading scorers in this game for each side have lived up to that, and it's Rakia Jackson doing her typical work underneath. Typical is the key word. She's been so consistent throughout the season, picking up where she left off, blocking shots, making moves off the dribble, creating for her teammates. Her game is just so good. Vanderbilt on the other side, their two guards in Harbison and Gerard are taking care of business in a variety of ways from the inside, from the outside, dribble penetration, and they have combined for 19 points. They are doing a good job executing their game plan. That free throw line area is their bread and butter right now. They are doing a good job of taking advantage of those ball screen actions. Tennessee is going to have to do a little better job this second half in defending that. And then if you're Vandy, how can you continue that same play this next half? Vanderbilt's been much better on the boards. They were out rebounded by 14 in the first meeting. Just minus six so far here in this one. And one thing that Coach Ralph talked to us about yesterday was when you have a young team, when you have a team with only eight players, there was a time where she felt like players used to look over for approval, or look over to see what would happen. She's had to take that step back, allow the players to figure it out, and it's paying dividends here in February. She said because her players would look to her for all of the answers, it just stopped the flow of their games. They just were too much in their head looking over their shoulder. She said she had to stick, take that step back and let her players hold each other accountable and be more of a player-led team. And so far, they, they're doing good of that. Vanderbilt has lost 20 consecutive SEC road games. They're tied at halftime. Harbison, dribble drive. There's Gerard. Keep an eye on those two in the second half. Could be the key to pulling this thing off on the road. Harbison drawing the foul. That was a big story as well in that opening half. The foul trouble for both sides. Four Lady Balls had two fouls, four. Vanderbilt players had two or three fouls, and they only have eight healthy players on the roster. And, and that's the difference. Tennessee has 13 players that they can rotate. Vandy only has eight. If you're Vanderbilt, you can't afford to foul early on in the game. You don't have the players like Tennessee does on their bench to turn to. Harbison misses her second foul shot of the game, and make it three. She's 82% this year. She's now three of six at the line. Horston had two fouls in that first half. It was three of four from the floor when she was out there. Jackson. Another fall away jump shot. She hit one of those in the first half and the next year to put Tennessee ahead. That's just Tennessee taking advantage of their size against Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt played a solid opening 20 minutes. Can they string together 20 more on the road? Harbison sprints. Allen had a couple early threes. She gives it back to Harbison. Single digits on the shot clock. Washington, good post position. And a foul whistled on LaChance. And that is Bella LaChance's third personal foul. Foul trouble could certainly be something that will play a factor down the stretch, but on Thursday, Sasha Washington had three fouls in the first quarter, didn't foul out, played the rest of the game. Coach Ralph wants to build that trust within even her younger players. She knows that she doesn't have that many she can turn to, so she really heavily relies on the players that she has on the floor. And the players even know themselves that they have to stay out there. First four points of the half to Tennessee. Allen picks up her dribble, and Rakia Jackson gets called for the personal foul. Just her first. That was a great job by Jordan Horston denying Vanderbilt so heavily. 
Arbison gets open for three, misses it too strong. Tennessee has scored the opening for the half. Stripling, been more active in this game than she has been of late. Horston puts it back with a tip in. Great follow up by Jordan Horston, but exactly what you said, Michael. They're really looking to get the ball inside to Stripling. She's posting up hard, doing her work early. She has that Vanderbilt player on their back. Let's see how they can continue it when we come back. Tennessee leads it by six. They have scored the only points of the second half. Our players to watch today, Rakia Jackson has been efficient. 15 more points in this one, came in averaging 18. Kaija Harbison has had to work a little bit harder. Came in averaging 20 per game, the second best margin in the league. Three of eight for the field. Tennessee's done a better job on her, trying to make her work for those shots after she had a couple early ones. Rakia Jackson is guarding Kaija Harbinson a lot in these in these possessions. And, you know, Rakia Jackson has that size advantage. But Kaija Harbinson, she's able to get going fast. So you still have to play solid defense on her. Tennessee's been switching out on the perimeter. They've flipped in some zone defense as well. Gerard. Jackson's called for the foul. She was trying to fight through the screen, and Allen takes a tumble, and that's the second personal foul on Rakia Jackson. Getting over screens, you have to stay low and really skinny up and put a body to avoid those screens. Tennessee doing a good job denying the ball, though. Vandy's trying to get those backdoor cuts, and Tennessee's not making it easy for them. Arbison had a good look. Tennessee continues to go under screens against her, but cannot connect. She's now three out of ten from the floor. Tennessee's done a good job of getting the ball inside in the second half. This time, Horston from deep, swirls at home. Nine in a row for the Lady Balls, and they have the largest lead of the game. Vanderbilt respond. 0-3 to start the second half. Harbison can't put an end to it. Her struggles continue. Tennessee a chance to open up a double-digit lead. But Walker turns it over, and that was a problem for Tennessee. There's about a six-minute stretch where they turned it over five times in the first half. That was number nine of the game. Vanderbilt has to go back to that pesky defense that they're known for. If their shots aren't falling, they have to make Tennessee's shots not fall either. Vanderbilt, 33% shooting for the game, but Washington with a good blow by, and that puts an end to a 9-0 run. Orston and Jackson, a 1-2 punch. And this one's going to Vanderbilt. Certainly looked like the Commodores were the last to touch it. The fans letting the officials know as well. Vanderbilt looking to string together back-to-back -to -back scoring possessions. Down by seven. And a five-second violation on Washington. Washington took accountability for that one. I don't think she realized that the five-second count was going. Held it a little too long. But kudos to Tennessee's defense for putting her in that position. Well, Vanderbilt doesn't have graduate guard Jordan Cambridge, two-time all-defensive team selection, led the nation in steals last year, and all-freshman team pick Ayanna Moore. She's out for the year with an ACL injury. Those are two key pieces that they expected to play key roles this year. Coach Ralph said that both of those players are doing a credible job of leading off of the court, though, and just being that coach and a teammate from the sideline. They've really been stepping up and, you know, just showing their leadership from the bench.
Walker needs to throw this in and just does get it to Hollingshed. Right back to Walker. Good alert pass by the post to Walker for the layup. Great awareness. She was able to hit Jillian Hollingshed, just stepped in. Nobody was there to pick her up. Easy layup from Jordan Walker. Good backdoor cut at the other end, but Harbison misses a layup. She's now three for 12 from the field. Darby, a three-pointer. Ripples the rope. Tennessee's ahead by a dozen. Right now is about response for Vanderbilt. Possession by possession has been their model, model for most of their season. You can't look back and stress on those plays that already happened. You got to look forward and take advantage of what's in front of you. Tennessee started six of eight from the field. Gerard can't connect. Walker, three defenders around her, has it poked out of her hands. Gerard lobs for Chambers. Chambers puts it down. So turnover for Tennessee leads the points. That's 15 points off of giveaways by Vandy in this game. And a big reason why they've been able to stay within striking distance. Kind of saps some of that energy as well off that turnover. Darby gets open in the lane and switches the shot. She's into double figures after averaging about five a game over the last six. But if you watch that possession, Jillian Holland says set a, a mini screen for Darby to get that open look on the SEC logo. Chambers misses it. Two of nine start to the half. Good bounce pass. Walker, Horston, and one. Tennessee basketball, passing ahead in transition. Jordan Horston does what Jordan Horston does. We were tied at 38 at halftime. It's been all Tennessee in the third quarter. An 18-4 run. Lady Balls are 8 of 10 from the field. Vanderbilt's missed some easy shots, but Tennessee has turned it up to a different level on both ends of the floor. Those third quarters are so important because it just sets the tone of the second half. If you're Vanderbilt right now, you really want to get back to what you were doing. You can't allow Tennessee to disrupt you. you got to continue to play your game because in the first half, they showed what they were capable of doing, even in their last game against Arkansas and even the first game when they matched up against Tennessee. That third quarter is it's just so important for Vanderbilt because you don't want them to get away too much. You want to reel it back in, apply pressure defensively, switch it up, disrupt Tennessee, and also you, you got to make those easy layups when you have them down below. Horson makes the foul shot. It's a 19-4 start to half number two for Tennessee. Which Ralph has talked about. It's a constant evolution with this young unit. Proud of the progress so far, but in a 15-point hole on the road. Chambers, Jada Brown, teardrop, offensive foul. Jordan Horston stands in to draw it. Jordan Horston did such a great job of making sure she was outside of that restricted area to draw the charge. She's doing it all tonight. 28th charge drawn by Tennessee this year. That's the most under Kelly Harper in her tenure so far here in game number 27. Calling shed, glides to the pop, puts it in. Plus one for Jillian Hollingshed. I love how Jillian Hollingshed did the little thing. She went to go meet the ball and she was able to get those. She was had so many defenders on her. She met the ball. And a lot of post players, they kind of sit back and, you know, wait for the ball to get them. But she went outside of her area to get it and was able to finish the tough lay. Kelly Harper's final message to her team today was, it's how you do it. And that is exactly the point. It's not necessarily about getting the end result. It's how you go about your business. And Hollingshed gets the benefit there. It is a 22-4 scoring run for Tennessee here in the third quarter to blow open an 18-point lead. 
Vanderbilt hasn't won an SEC road game since January 9th of 2020. 20 consecutive SEC road losses. And through 20 minutes, it was all good. Tied at 38. But it's been a blitzkrieg from Tennessee. Harbison cannot get another shot to fall, but Vanderbilt will get an additional possession. This ball's tipped out. These last few three minutes is going to be so big for Vanderbilt to kind of get back on track. These next few possessions, they're going to have to convert. And they go for points. Harbison struggling. Gerard. Washington meets two defenders and gets bailed out by a foul. Tennessee's length is just, you can see Jordan Horson in the huddle just saying, put your hands straight up. They, they can't score over us. It's starting to really affect Vanderbilt's offense late in the third quarter. It shows the maturity of Horston as well, becoming a leader for this team as she blocks the shot. Here comes Tennessee, full throttle the other way. A pass to Darby and a layup. Great transition for the Lady Balls. One seed, four to four, Tennessee run. The defense has sprung the offense here in the second half. And it's up to a 20 point Tennessee lead. Look at Horston, first of all, closing out. And then the no look pass. She knew she had Darby the whole way. That just goes back to the senior leadership. Jordan, making defense turn into offense. It's, it's simple basketball. Tennessee losing last Monday. They had the extra day to prepare. Coach Harper said they took a day off to collect themselves, an extra day of practice to get ready for this game. And getting close to the end of the season, they have answered the bell here in the third quarter. 10 of 12 from the field. And the margin has blown open to 20 points. And a foul whistled on Walker. She got the body into Harbison. So Harbison will head back to the free throw line where she'll try to get right. And has made just three out of six there so far. And Tennessee has frustrated her in so many ways. A couple different players have taken their chance at her. And Harbison, who had that 41-point game against Texas A&M, the eighth most in D1 this year, has been held to nine. I think these free throws are going to be big for Harbison. She just kind of needs to see the ball go into the basket for her. Hopefully these free throws can get her going. She just needs to get that feel of the ball going in. Harbison top 10 among active players and scoring. Closing in on 2,200 as she sinks a pair, 11 now. That's a team high. Puckett. Breaks the press. Horston was open. She'll glide to the cup for an easy layup. Nobody picked her up. Jordan Horston with 16. Great heads up play from Jordan Horston. She had an open lane and took advantage of it. Gerard. She's been quiet in the second half. Nearly a turnover. Does get it back. Not a lot of post touches for Washington overall in this game, but you can see what she does when she does get chances. I liked her composure on that last possession. She went behind the defense, was able to get an open post look, and she just took her time and made a great layup. Powell has missed a couple from outside, decides to enter it back for Puckett. Misses the initial attempt, oh, nearly was tipped in. Off of Powell last, goes back to Vandy. Tennessee is just posting up Vanderbilt's defense because Vandy is playing behind on the inside. Tennessee can have a field day if they just make all their little bunnies underneath the basket. Tennessee with a 40 to 12 lead in points in the paint in the game. La Chance. Too strong. Oh, 
Arbison, a pull up. Tennessee always sprinting into the front court. Nobody's guarding Horston. Under a minute to go in the third, and it's been a third frame to remember for the Lady Falls. Franklin pirouetting and drawing a foul. What's impressed you about Tennessee's defense here in this quarter? Just how aggressive they've been doing. They've been doing a good job of denying the ball, guarding those back look actions, really just making it hard for Vanderbilt. They have that size advantage, and they've just really been exerting their length onto Vandy. Vanderbilt shot 46% in the opening period. Since that point, they're eight of their last 29. Franklin sinks a, a pair there to get it back to 20. This has been the largest lead. After we were tied at 38 at halftime, Tennessee plus 20 in the third. Gerard. Washington on the block. Tough shot, doesn't get it to go. Eight seconds left, here comes Horston. Down to five as she crosses the timeline. Horston stops, misses the shot attempt. Puckett will not get it back up. And that's how the quarter comes to an end. And it was a dominant performance by Tennessee in the third. The Lady Vols shoot 73% from the floor in the period. They outscore Vanderbilt by 20. Running and gunning, Tennessee. Horston has come out strong in the second half after being limited to six in the opening half. She just put up 10 in the third quarter. To see the evolution of Jordan Horston's game has been so fun. I remember her coming in as a freshman. She was playing the point guard position, and you know, over time, as Tennessee was able to recruit a lot more guards, it's really let her evolve her game and become more of a scoring threat for Tennessee. Kelly Harper said today that the key player for Tennessee down the stretch is Jordan Horston, not for her scoring necessarily, but when she stuffs the stat sheet, passing, rebounding, steals, defense, that's when Tennessee is at its best. 16 points, seven of nine, you take that any day of the week, but eight rebounds, four assists, a steal, and a block, and in the plus minus chart, she's number two on the team. Tennessee outscoring Vanderbilt by 24 when Horston's on the floor. And that just goes to show the impact that she has on this team. She doesn't always have to score the ball, but she does. <laughs> but even when she <laughs> isn't doing that, she's able to impact the game in so many different ways. When she plays well, the team plays well, and she's just heavily relied on. And Again, to see her evolution and the growth in her game has been so fun. Orston leads the team in everything but points this season. McDonald's All-American has blossomed into a future top 10 WNBA draft pick. Good look underneath. Jackson was open. This is the initial attempt. And it stays with Tennessee after Vandy the last to touch it. Back with Cameron Harris, I'm Michael Watring, and our entire crew watching this one with you on this Sunday. Hope you've enjoyed watching with us. Tennessee outscored Vanderbilt by 20 in the third. After it was tied at 38 at halftime, and Horston right on cue, drops in another bucket. She's got a game-high 18. Great cut by Jordan Horston, but I love how Jasmine Powell's been playing. She's been such a good playmaker for Tennessee this season, and just just being such a heads-up player and a great facilitator. Everything difficult for Vanderbilt in the second half. Bodies colliding and a foul whistled. Tess Darby not happy with the call, but she gets called for the foul. Well, Vanderbilt this season has seen six of the 11 SEC opponents shoot at least 50%. Tennessee's at 54%. Just held Arkansas to 42%. It was the best opponent field goal percentage in about two months. Harbison a three. Can't get it going quite yet. 
Horston a rebound shy of a double-double now. Horston all the way to the bucket, misses the layup. Gerard. Game opening up here to start off the fourth quarter. Tennessee trapping and a blocking foul whistle on Powell. And the fans make the officials aware of their opinion on the call. Quite a luxury to bring in a Big Ten second team all conference pick. Off the bench, Gerard connects from deep. She gets going. Gerard hits her second three-pointer of the game. Right now, there's a lot of standing around from Tennessee. They're going to have to make cuts and break down Vanderbilt's defense to get a good look. Powell tried to circle it around the defender to get it to Jackson, and it slides past her out of bounds. Jordan Walker will replace her in the lineup. Holland had to come back in too. How would you describe Tennessee's response after the double overtime loss against Mississippi State last week? I like it. You know, when you are in SEC play, you're going to have games back to back, and it's going to all be all about how you respond to it. And I think Tennessee's doing a good job. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see them get down for too long. It's hard to come out of that mentally. And you know, the game of basketball is, I would say, is at least 60% mental in how you respond. So you want to see that toughness from them. And I think they have been doing a good job of that. Gerard just drained a three, 14th time this year with three plus three pointers. And a traveling violation as Allen slid that pivot foot. Fields within 16. And Kelly Harper has asked for time, so it brings us to a timeout here with eight minutes to go in the game. Tennessee leads it by 16 points. Lady Vols will look to close out a six straight win over Vanderbilt when we come back to. Tennessee leads. Tennessee leads by 16 at the eight minute mark of the fourth quarter, 68-52. And the dynamic duo that is Rakia Jackson and Jordan Horston have showed out today. They've been terrific all season long. And in this game, 33 points, 12 rebounds, five assists. They've made 14 of 23 from the floor. And for Tennessee to make a deep run in the postseason, these two will carry the load. It's so hard to play against these two. They can do it all offensively and defensively. They're, they're a hard duo in the SEC. I would say probably top three in the SEC. Their game is just so good, and Tennessee relies on them heavily, but they, Tennessee has so many players that they can turn to in different ways, and that's such a threat for them, and especially going to be a threat for them for the rest of the season. That's what Rakia Jackson does. Uses the dribble drive to put it into a 6-0 run. Putting in the lamp, Jackson with 17. Tennessee by 18. Gerard's hit back-to-back three-pointers. Tried to find Allen underneath. Vanderbilt asking for a foul. And no whistle there. Seven thirty-nine to play in the game. This was a nip and tuck contest. Seven ties, six lead changes. 38 apiece at halftime. And you can still see Vandy playing hard. They're going to play hard for 40 minutes. They're going to take it down until the clock reaches zero. So Tennessee's just going to continue to have to compete for the rest of this game. Jackson with 19 as she gets second chance points. Tennessee 14-0 leaders in second chance points. They were plus 21 the first time around. Vanderbilt just no response for that length and size of Tennessee on the offensive glass. Walker. Three on the shot clock. Gerard. Walker a block. Walker has Horston. Horston streaking. Traveling violation. 
Well, that was nearly a great possession by Jordan Walker. Got the deflection that forced the bad shot, got a block, and nearly had a run out assist. Jordan Walker, it was a three seconds left on the shot clock, was able to get that block. I don't think I saw the travel <laughs> in that possession, but you win some, you lose some. Definitely looked good enough to me. Harbison misses the layup. Tennessee leading it by 20 points. Looking to win a 16th in a row to start Kelly Harper's career against in-state opponents. Orston. That is a tough shot. Doesn't get a foul whistled. Hollingshed carves out some real estate. Can't put it back. And now Harbison v. Darby 1v1. What a crossover wow. from Harbison, but misses another layup. Continues the frustrating day. She's 3 of 17 from the field. Darby, meanwhile, draws the foul. Harbison is a player who can hit up a lot of points. You kind of wonder if this game would be a little bit different if she was doing a better job with connecting her shots because she, was, she gets great looks today, but she wasn't able to finish them. And again, it just makes you wonder how close the game could have been if she could hit those, those shots in the basket. You have to think that Tennessee's length has affected Harbison as well. She's a 41% shooter overall this season. Very efficient, averages 20 a game. Been held to 11 on three of 17 in this game. And as you mentioned, she's missed some shots that she normally makes. Yeah, even though she goes against a lot of length just being in the SEC, she does such a good job of still finishing. I think today, though, Tennessee really did a good job of, you know, using their length to their advantage and, and disrupted that play for Harbison today. Tennessee's expanded out a 22-point lead, the largest of the afternoon, outscoring Vanderbilt by 22 in the second half. Here is Harbison. Free throw line jump shot, wide left. Passat, the rebound. What a look from Jordan Walker, her eighth assist. That was a great find by Jordan Walker to see that heads up play. Tennessee point guards do a really good job of facilitating and getting those good looks for their teammates. One of the early season keys for Kelly Harper was a high assist team. They have 17 on 30 made buckets in this one. Demi Washington misses the jump shot. Walker, her sixth rebound, and then we get a double foul whistled against Chambers and Hollingshed behind the play. Battling for some space, and Hollingshed and Chambers went after it. So I believe that it should be a restart from the point of interruption off of the Double foul, so it should be Tennessee inbound near midcourt. Here's another look at what happened. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. Five in pink and 53 in white. They get tangled up, and Hollingshed winds up on the surface. So in a 24-point game, Walker, Hollingshed, buries Chambers, missed the layup though. Jackson does not. Ten in a row for Tennessee. That inside presence for Tennessee is starting to cave in on Vanderbilt. They know that they couldn't allow Tennessee to get those second chance opportunities today. But Tennessee can't be stopped on the boards. Hollingshed swats the chance. South Carolina leads LSU by 16 with eight and a half minutes to go in a battle of the two undefeated teams. So Tennessee will knew they would get a game back if they could win today from one of those two teams. And it looks like it'll be LSU as the Gamecocks will remain unbeaten, barring a comeback. That Aaliyah Boston and Angel Reese matchup, I'm sure is going to be incredible <laughs> or is incredible right now. 
Jackson bobbles the entry pass, able to save it. Under four minutes to go, and Tennessee ahead by 26. Passat, she's got a great stroke from outside and rattles it down. I love the way Justine Passat's shot looks. It, it looks so good. She has so much upside in her game. I'm excited to see how she continues to evolve throughout her time at Tennessee. Tennessee outscoring Vanderbilt 43-14 in half two. Chance gets a friendly roll. Her third and fourth points of the day. Holling Shen. Too strong here. Puckett out for Walker. More second chance opportunities for Tennessee. And the fans applauding. Holling Shed. Looked like that could have been an offensive foul. She missed the initial attempt, missed the second chance, and frustrated with herself for missing those opportunities. Holling Shed, solid overall game, 5.8 rebounds. This has been about what she's done in terms of rebounding of late, but 11 points in the last four, just the five today. Demi Washington wanted to get a push off call. It does seem like Holling Shed. Extended that arm a little bit, but I think that UConn game for Holling Shed was such a wake-up call for her. I think she came out, she was so locked in, and ever since then, she's been playing so well, really stepping up and being an anchor for Tennessee on the inside. Tennessee has been without Tamari Key since December 8th. One of the best shot blockers in college basketball history. Nearing 300, out with the blood clots in the lungs for the season. Should make a full recovery. But they've consistently been trying to find somebody inside to fill that role. And here of late, it has been Jillian Hollingshed kind of shouldering that pressure underneath. You can see Tamara Key with her clipboard and pen on the <laughs> sideline. She's really stepped up and be that kind of coach player from the sideline for the Tennessee's inside game. But yeah, Jillian Hollingshed has been playing great back. Basketball. Passat out there with Miles, Wynn, Puckett, and Hollingshed. And it's Puckett on a chuck shot. She's been ultra efficient here of late as well. She's been a great player off the bench for Tennessee in the last month or so, averaging about seven during that time. Coach Harper said she's just so tough in the way that she plays and the way that she carries herself. She's just so reliable off the court, on the court, a good teammate for Tennessee. Tennessee has blown this thing out to a 29-point lead after we were tied at 38 at halftime. Holling Shed. Passat's open. Can't leave her open for too long. Too strong, though, on the three-pointer. Passat called for the foul. If somebody stepped away at halftime, maybe just checking it back out and looking at the score, why has Tennessee been so dominant in the second half? Defense, that's what it started with. They started to just impose their length and their strength onto Vanderbilt, guarding those backdoor cuts, denying early, denying the post on the inside, making it really difficult for Vandy to score and that was able to lead them into transition and get those open points and those open looks and just going coast to coast. Eddie, Eddie Darby getting a <laughs> ovation from Tennessee fans. Darby, the younger sister of Tess Darby. Fans will want her to shoot anytime she's got the ball. Win. And Passat will set things up for Tennessee. It's scoring performance from the Lady Falls and a foul whistled on Chambers on a reach in. Tennessee leads it by 29. Down towards a minute. Here's Darby. Fans wanted to hoist it. Three on the shot clock. Win. 
Puts up a jumper and it's a shot clock violation. There's one minute left in the game. This should be Tennessee's seventh win by 20 plus points of the year. 50 seconds to go, 85-56. Lady Falls clamping down defensively in the second half. Demi Washington has already hit one from out there and hits a second. It was two of nine entering today. She's hit two of three in this one. I love the fact that Vanderbilt plays hard until the last second. They still are talking, getting after it, playing solid defense. Win with an offensive rebound. And she goes to the free throw line. 15 offensive rebounds for Tennessee. They have outscored Vanderbilt 18 to nothing on second chance points. And unless Vanderbilt gets a second chance point on the next possession, it'll be the first time that Tennessee blanks a team in the category. Second free throw in from Kaya Wynn. Margins at 27 points, 86-59. Shot clock is off. And the chance. Let's see if Vanderbilt dribbles this out or if they go for bucket here. The chance is ready to dribble it out. And on a play for K-Day. In the all pink. Tennessee wins a sixth straight over Vanderbilt. Hannah, the Commodores, a 21st consecutive SEC road loss. And camera, you look at this matchup, the first 20 minutes, it was an absolute battle between in-state teams. Tied at 38 in the break. Tennessee started off the third quarter on a 24-4 run. They pull away for a 27-point win. What's your biggest takeaway from this? The response from Tennessee. We knew going into this game that it was going to be a battle. Vanderbilt is tough and gritty, and they're re the way that they play doesn't reflect their record. So we knew it was going to be a good game. I think Tennessee did a good job of coming out that second half early on in the third quarter and establishing how the rest of this game was going to go. Great response, and I know if you're Kelly Harper, you're pleasantly and happy with the response from your team today. Tennessee wins it by a final count of 86 to 59. Lady Vols full throttle in the second half. 48, 21 outscore Vanderbilt in half number two for our entire crew here today. My partner Cameron Harris, I'm Michael Watrang saying so long from Knoxville where Tennessee wins at 86, 59. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody.